Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Chris Fristali. Welcome to Breaking the Fourth Wall here on Twitch TV, RadioCastFM.com, and, of course, Realm of the Mist Entertainment. With me, as always, is the hemorrhoid on a Gungan's ass, Mr. Brian Miller. Oh, man. See, like, now I know for a fact Kirsty's not watching this, because we're not allowed to say anything about that species or anything in this house. Alive I'll tell or you what. dead. I'll tell you what, during my lunch break at work today, I did look up that, uh, that Jar Jar mask. I want it. <laughs> I want it. Look, for those of you that don't know, uh, Kirsty and I have this, like, rule in our house. We're not allowed to say the, the JJ name. And uh, the other night I asked her if I could have a Tauntaun and or Gungan stuffed mounted head in the living room of our new house. And she stared at me and said there's to be no mention of that bastard in this house, alive or dead. So I'm not allowed to have anything like that in here. And I'm kind of sad about it because I really wanted that that mounted head. <laughs> that or a Tauntaun. Or a Tauntaun. But he, but he thought they smelled bad on the outside. Oh man, no, that was that was my girlfriend from like when I joined the military. Your girlfriend was yeah. a Tauntaun? Well, she might as well have been. I thought she smelled bad on the outside. Is that why she's anyway, an ex girlfriend? Because they, you sliced her open to stay warm? No, she's an ex girlfriend because she was drugging my ass to make me like her, so That's what I'm doing. I know, right? I'm about <laughs> to break up with your ass. Hey. Not on the air. Oh fine. Okay, so uh, anyway, let's 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 get on to with it a little bit. We got a lot to discuss today. I want to stay on time because, guys, re- directly after this podcast, we will be doing the uh, Order sixty nine with our boys over at the Cocky Cockpit. But you could stay right here to watch the, all the great uh, footage from Battlefront two on the PS four. And in fact, if you have a PS four, send a uh, friend request to Wild High W Y L D E H I G H, and I can get you in on the game. You could play along with us. Um, all right. So first and foremost, the big news I want to talk about really kind of started off right. Let's talk Star Trek. Star Trek. Okay. There's a couple. There's a couple things about Star Trek. The first thing I want to bring up is uh, uh, the unfortunate news of Nichelle Nichols. The uh, for those who don't know, maybe you're not a big Star Trek fan. The original series Star Trek was groundbreaking, and one of the reasons was because of Nichelle Nichols, who was the original Lieutenant Ohora. Uh, think back in the 1960s, there was no such thing as like uh, main parts for African Americans. Uh, there was no no parts uh, main parts for like Asians or foreigners and stuff of that nature. Uh, Star Trek broke that ground with, with characters like Lieutenant Ohora, Lieutenant Sulu, and Lieutenant Chekhov. Well, unfortunately, still alive and kicking, Nichelle Nichols has been diagnosed with dementia. And unfortunately, as it's been reported that the dementia is so bad that friends, doctors, and even the, uh, the, uh, like com- the con circuits that she's usually a part of like the star Trek conventions and the comic book conventions and stuff of that nature are trying to get her to not be a part of these things anymore because of the, because of her, her advanced advancedness of the, of this terrible disease. So, uh, I, I just wanted to touch base on this real quick. If you have any memories or anything you want to talk about, Michelle Nichols, and of course offer my, my absolute condolences to, uh, miss Nichols and, and her family in, in this time. Yeah, no, uh, it, it, it sucks. I mean, uh, my, my dad's dad, my grandpa, uh, he had Alzheimer's. I uh, watched him go through that for 13 years before he died, and uh, uh, it, it, it's hard to watch, and it's, it's, a, it's seriously a, a terrible thing. That, I mean, it's the worst thing that could happen to anybody. Um, you know, it's just, especially somebody like that. Because, look, I mean, you and I are both Star Wars fans, first and foremost. We both like of Star course. Trek. We both like Star Trek. Um Except STD. Ex- except Fuck for that STD. show. Uh, but, you know, it's it. Star Trek still has their own community of, of hardcore sweaties that, that that's to them. That's just as devastating as when we lost Carrie Fisher, you know. Um, so it, 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 it is a sad day. It sucks. Um, I'm well, kind especially of, I not that. Not that. Let me just reiterate sure. on, on your thought there. Let me just reiterate. It's almost as bad as when we lost Carrie Fisher, but knock wood, thank God, you guys haven't lost Michelle Nichols yet, yeah. and hopefully not for a very long time. I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, no, it, well, even uh, 
look, even coming off that, look, you know, you know me, I'm a very realist person. Um, Mm -hmm. when I, when I tell somebody the truth, it's not because I'm trying to be calloused or anything like that, but if she has dementia that badly, really, if you're looking at it from the outside in, we, you know, we've already lost her, you know, cause when I was watching my grandpa go through, uh, through his Alzheimer's, he wasn't there the last six or seven years of it. It wasn't him, you know? So it's right. in a way they already have, she's still physically here, but she's not mentally here. Uh, it's just, it, it, it does suck. It, it, and, and my, I mean, it thoughts and prayers, man. Well, from what, from, really all you can say. From what I understand and what I, what I've read and 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 what's been reported, uh, she doesn't want to give up the circuits and the comic cons because she feels more engaged when she's doing them, and it kind of I guess it helps give her like clarity or or focus, mm-hmm. you know. Um, but I guess because of the bouts or the spells that come with it, is what people are are concerned about with her being out in you know, very crowded conventions with adoring fans, Mm -hmm. you know? So I, I I can kind of see, I guess kind of see the argument for both ends. Yeah. I was, I was going to say, I can kind of see it from both sides. Um, look, I mean, because most of us don't know, you know, what she's like outside of those, those circuits, you know, and those conventions and stuff. If she's saying, Hey, that's what gives me the most focus try it for a little while, you know, and if, it, if there's no really issues, then let her keep doing it. If there's a couple issues, it might be time to, to start, you know, taking a step back from all that. You know, I mean, hell, we just saw uh, Jeremy Bullock do it for star Wars, you know? So, I mean, but I mean, there, there's no dementia or anything involved in that. It was just one of those retirement things, you know, it's right. Getting, it might be getting to be that time where, you know, you got to face the music and. Well, the, the one, the one thing that's definitely undeniable is uh, every interview I've ever seen. I don't know her personally, mm-hmm. obviously, but every interview I've ever seen, any uh, recollection of the original TV series or the movies uh, where they have interviews with, with people like Nichelle, uh, she is a very well-refined ref- woman and definitely a woman of class. And it, it it's devastating to hear such an upstanding person like that going through something like that. My thoughts and prayers to her family and friends and, of course, to Nichelle herself. Mm-hmm. On to other Star Trek news. Uh, Star Trek 4 film is in development, but the future of it is in doubt because Chris Pine and Chris Helmsworth depart over the salary negotiations. Oh, shit. Yes, they have lost Chris. Uh, they, they've lost uh, both Chris's. They lost both Kirk's. Yeah, because I forgot that uh, Chris Helmsworth was uh, Kirk's Jim's father. dad. Yeah, I forgot about that. So, yeah, the the fo- following failed negotiations, Pine was going to reprise his role as Captain James Kirk for the fourth time. Helmsworth was going to return via time travel as Kirk's father, who was introduced in Star Tre- uh, 2009 Star Trek reboot. Uh, what happens next, especially since the rest of the cast is still on board, remains uncertain. The Hollywood Reporter has the story, and it offers up a dark side to the franchise built upon hope and optimism. After all, money exists doesn't exist in the utopian world created by Gene Roddenberry over 50 years ago, but it sure as hell exists right here and now. And Pine and Helmsworth felt they weren't getting enough, so it was of it to step aboard the bridge again, or rather, they felt Paramount was not honoring the existing deal. Look, I'm not saying these guys are superstars, okay? Nor am I saying that they deserve more than their co-stars. Like uh, uh, Zoe Saldano or Zachary Quinto or or si- even Simon Pegg. I'm not saying this at all, but um, Paramount pony up, okay? Not paying a Star Trek franchise actor who's making you the most money because it is that franchise is like not giving Harrison Ford the money to play Han Solo. In a Star Wars franchise. I mean, it's just a stupid, stupid move. And I can't speak so much for Helmsworth, you know, because, I mean, Helmsworth does have Thor and everything else. He, You know, he's got plenty to fall back on. Plus, his character wasn't that important to Star Wars or Star Trek, rather. But Chris Pine is the best incarnation of Kirk since Shatner in the 60s. In fact, 
I would argue that I I actually like Chris Pine better mm-hmm. than 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 Bill. Um, that if I was Paramount, man, I wouldn't want to let that go. No, I, I wouldn't either. Um, but you know, I, it does suck that it comes down to money like that, and it's it's one of those things where maybe these actors feel like they have leverage because the you know the the studio is like fuck, we have to have them in here. We have we have to do what they want to get them to stay. Look, I, I get it from both ends, you know. If you feel like you're being shafted, you want more money, you ask for more money. You know, if you're the company and you really don't want to pay that extra, recast. Like, I, I, I know I say that like it's so simple to recast, but just fucking recast. Like, I, if, if you guys can't come to, a, to an agreement on, on salary, they're in a fucking movie. Give them the fucking money, you know. Like, are you serious? But it's... Look, I, I have weird outlooks on stuff like that. Like, uh, I. <sighs> well, let me let me paint know. a scenario. Let me p- paint a scenario sure. for you because sure. I mean, you're you're 30 years old. I'm I'm 41. Uh, we both know of the original James T. Kirk, William Shatner, the 60s uh, Star Trek TV show, and of course the uh, the six m- first movies that came out mm-hmm. uh, were were built played the role for so many years you know what was it almost 30 years he was he was uh captain kirk yeah or something of that nature so for us we're used to the role being changed because mm-hmm. we had kirk or we had shatner all them years and then all of a sudden it was chris pine and it was jarring at first it was, uh, to me honestly it was more jarring for zachary quinto as spock over lennon nimoy than it was for chris pine over william shatner mm-hmm. but the thing is is that you know, we, we, we got used to the fact that these characters are now reestablished with new actors. So replacing Pine isn't so much as jarring for yeah, us. Right. But you got to remember, since 2009, this was Star Trek, or at least the first incarnation of Star Trek, to a lot of new fans. Mm-hmm. You know, and the and the, the the biggest thing I keep trying to like throw into my mind or, or get out of my mind really is like to those types of fans. Would the loss of Chris Pine as Captain Kirk be like the conversation we've had in Star Wars of who would you get to replace Carrie Fisher since she passed away? Mm-hmm. You know, it, it, well, it comes down to the question, is it worth recasting or well, is it time to scrap, scrap the uh, franchise and start fresh? Let, OK, let's put it in a different you, you want uh, you want to compare it to Star Wars. Let's put it in a different perspective. Okay, that, go ahead. That, that would be like making another movie a sequel to solo and Alden Ehrenreich doesn't want to come back. So you have to recast Han Solo again. That, that, that's, that, that's the line that, I mean, that's the, the only true comparison really to, to kind of put them in perspective. I know there's a lot of people be like, yes, thank you. God, that motherfucker's gone. And some people be like, Oh man, really? Jesus. But, the movies are still Me, uh, the only thing I want is L337 gone. L33. <laughs> Fucking L3. L3. But no, I <laughs> uh, I just... I. It is what it is. Uh, I'm not going to lose as much sleep over Star Trek as I am Star Wars. Because um, that's just the way I was raised and the way, I, I'm, the way I'm built. Uh, and, and who I am. I don't have a Star Trek YouTube channel. But... Uh, yeah, it's it's it is what it is. Uh, if they can't come to an agreement, like I said, I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. If they do, awesome, great. I'll go see Star Trek Four whenever it comes out in a couple of years. But I, it doesn't matter to me that much. Well, I've actually been enjoying the Star Trek reboots. Um, oh, I like the new ones. Yeah, I like them quite a bit. So I really hope they do do a Star Trek Four. But really, again, I don't I don't care as much about Helmsworth as I do about Chris Pine. To me, you can, Helmsworth, you can get around that. Yeah, you can get around. Yeah. You, you don't have to do the the timeline right. thing where George Kirk comes back. Right. But you need Captain Kirk. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. I, I think I'm kind of one of those people that, like, if they lose Chris Pine, I'm not saying they shouldn't do any more Star Treks. But what I'm saying is maybe it's time to reboot the franchise. No offense to the uh, other actors, but just if, you, if you're going to replace one, you might as well replace all and start fresh. Mm-hmm. You know, because uh, with with the and it's it's so weird because we're talking about these franchises. Uh, you know, like it, it's almost like uh, they decide to do another Alien that fo- directly follows Alien Resurrection, and they don't cast Sigourney Weaver. Mm-hmm. That's not Alien, right? You know what I mean? Or or 
you know, look at look at like uh, RoboCop three and how much flack it took be, uh, took because Peter Sellers or or not yet, yeah, Peter Sellers wasn't yeah. the uh, wasn't the RoboCop, right? You know, so it's a it's a very slippery slope with beloved franchises, mm-hmm. you know. So I don't know. I, I I hope there's a Star Trek four. I hope they work out the negotiation deals with Chris Pine. Of course, I hope they do it for Helmsworth as well, and they come to some sort of agreement and get the project back on track. But if not, I hope they just give it a respectful send off and start fresh. Right. Let's go to one more piece of bad news before we really delve into what we like talking about most. Oh God, yeah. Okay, let's get it over with. Unfortunately, this uh, past twenty four hours ago, uh, the wrestling world, the 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 world wrestling entertainment slash world wrestling federation world lost another titan icon of the 80s uh in the tag team division along with his uh partner brett the hitman hart uh jim the anvil Nightheart passed away uh it from what i understood i don't have the full details i actually have to pull that up uh but uh from what i understand he was uh in his 60s and he did die peacefully at home i i don't know any more than that but uh he was part of the beloved Hart Foundation tag team. Uh, had great feuds against uh, Arn Arn Anderson and and uh, Tully Blanchard, uh, the Rockers, and I, I mean God, I can name it forever. Uh, former tag team champion for many years. He was the brother-in-law of Bret the Hitman Hart. Trained up in Calgary at the Hart Foundation or yeah Hart Foundation Hart Family uh, Wrestling Training Center called the Dungeon. Just, uh, it's a huge, devastating loss uh, to the to the wrestling community. He was a, he was a very loved guy. A lot of people felt that he was uh, one of those dudes that, like, when you met him, he's family. Mm-hmm. You know, is is the best way to describe it. So, I know you're not a huge wrestling fan, but I'm pretty sure back in the '80s, the heydays of the '80s, you probably have seen him perform and all. What did what did what did you think? I, I mean, it's along the same lines as. Uh... Uh, the Michelle Nichols thing. It's it's uh, it's unfortunate, man, and it sucks because it seems like we're losing a lot of people nowadays, you know. And it's, it, like I like like you said, I'm not that big of a wrestler. Uh, I don't follow wrestling a whole lot, but I mean, it it, it sucks, man. And I was right. He was born. He was born February eighth, nineteen fifty five. Mm-hmm. So yeah, he was he was about sixty three years old. Mm-hmm. Yep, sixty three. Uh, trying to see what he. Uh, Passed away of. I'm not getting that information. I don't want to waste the whole entire time scrolling find through. It. Death. Here we go. According to DMZ, Jim Nightheart's wife, Elizabeth uh, Nightheart, told investigators that Jim was having problems sleeping and got out of bed to adjust the thermostat. Ellie then said that as Nightheart went to touch it, he turned weirdly as if about to dance and then fell into the wall and ground. She immediately dialed 911, believing he was having a seizure, something he was ta- taking medication for. Nightheart had a four-inch gash on his face when EMTs arrived. He died at the age of eight, 63. According to the pa- Pasco County Sheriff's Office, the fall was the cause of death. At the time of his death, he had early-onset Alzheimer's disease. Oh, man. So there it is. He. It sounds like he had an episode or stroke. Mm-hmm. You know, with with her saying he turned around and acted like he was going to do a weird dance right before he fell and busted his head open. Yeah. So. Man, that's that's rough. That 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 that's a huge huge thing. Not only in the wrestling community, but you know, my heart definitely goes to, out to uh, to his wife. You know, who literally sat there and watched what happened to him. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, that is, that, that is, that is a very sad thing. I mean, I mean uh, thoughts and prayers out to the Hart family mm-hmm. and of course the Night Hart family. Absolutely. Uh, Jim, you will be missed. Thank you, brother. On to happier news. Well, I, I don't know if it's happier. We'll, we'll, we'll discuss it. We'll talk about it. Star Wars Episode Nine. Oh Jesus! Here we go. You're gonna you, look. You're gonna get me ranting because I. We're, if we're talking about this first, it's gonna set the mood for the rest of this show. Look, go ahead, go ahead and do it. Go ahead and let everybody know what's going on. 
It is reported by multiple, multiple sources that Ugh. Lucasfilm and Disney are in talks of making Episode Nine a two-parter film. Ugh. Now, I have not found anything, and I've been scouring through. I have not found anything from, like, MakingStarWars.net or StarWars.com confirming this. But it does look like that they are at least considering the possibility of making this a longer film. And then separating it into two parts. Now, I we we have we have my well, I have my opinions on it, uh, which I will happily discuss in detail. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to let Brian go first here because I know he's kind of chomping at the bit to get this off his chest. So, oh, Jesus, oh, God. Brian, how are you feeling about an episode nine two parter? I look, that's going to be episodes nine and ten to me. I don't give a shit what anybody else fucking calls it. It's going to be episodes nine and ten. Like you, there's, you can't just call it episode nine and then episode nine point five. You, you can't fucking do it. It's, look, I live, breathe, bleed Star Wars. If you cut me, John Williams theme is gonna come out of my fucking veins. I'm Star Wars through and fucking through. Now I want to cut you to and see if that. I know, happens. right? You just want to hear, you know. Anyway, but it's it's one of those things that. I, I'm one of those people that likes the direction Disney's going with their new films and this new okay. canon and everything. Obviously, yeah, I, I like the new canon. Minus a piece here and there. But uh, <laughs> the Jedi. Hey, oh, God, fuck you, man. As I um, want to rile you up, get it out. <laughs> but uh, I, I like the direction they're going with it. And, and uh, when I hear they're splitting episode nine into two films, or they're talking about it, why? Just they don't make it a sequel trilogy. Just make it the saga from now on. Why does it have to be trilogies every time? You know why can't you just keep making movies to make the movie, make the next one to make that to, to tells the next part of the story. If that's the case, just make episode nine, make it a fucking cliffhanger, and then when episode ten rolls around, it's like oh shit, here we go, shit's getting real. You know, like it's and, and you know I'm. The more I sit here and think about it, the more I'm convincing myself that this is going to happen because we still don't have an announcement for the next standalone film. We knew about Rogue One years before it happened. We knew about Solo years before it happened. We're two years away. Well, no, two and a half years away from the next standalone film and nothing yet. We haven't gotten anything. I mean, there's been rumors about Obi-Wan and a bounty hunter movie and stuff like that, but what if they're just doing... Episodes nine and ten, back to back in twenty nineteen and twenty twenty. Well, mean, it's, again, it's, it's possible. Well, again, remember we we did re, uh, have reports a while ago that the Disney, after the failure of Solo, has postponed standalones for a while. But then they came right back out and said that no, that that wasn't the case. They oh, they were okay, just they were ending they were ending the a Star Wars story um, subtitle. That, that's oh, what they were ending. Yeah. With so. that, I agree with. Thank yeah. God, because yeah. to me, it's just Star Wars Rogue One and Star Wars Solo. It is not mm-hmm. a Star Wars story. A Star Wars story. They should have left it as the anthology films. That was I that liked, was easy enough. I liked that a lot better. Uh, uh, anthology, I really did. But uh, no, I I agree with you. I I think it should be Episode Nine, Episode Ten. However, as I said to you off off air before when we discussed it yesterday, um. To me, though, I would never be the type of person to to look a gift horse in the mouth. To me, it's more Star Wars either way. Yeah. And and I, I look at it this way: if they're writing that much material for Episode Nine, it's gonna or be they sick. have written they have written that much material for Episode Nine that they feel that it needs to encompass two films. It's gonna be sick. I would rather them separate the films into two films mm-hmm. than cut a shit ton of stuff out. Here's, Especially when they're talking about wanting to tie in the whole entire saga into this film. Here's here's the problem I have with them splitting it into two different films, right? Okay. Um, okay, l- like, look at Infinity War, right? Look at Avengers 3 and 4. Originally, that was going to be Infinity War Part 1 and Infinity War Part 2. And then the directors came along and said, you know, well, it's, it feels more like Avengers 3 and 4, so that's just we're just going to... Two different titles, right? Mm-hmm. With Star Wars, think about what happens when you split the last film of a franchise into two movies. 
you know, you look at uh, the Hunger Games films and Harry Potter, and you, and, and you, you look at how they split them. The first film always is just all lead up. Nothing really big happens. It's just all setting the stage for a year later when the big film happens. Okay? That's all Deathly Hollows was. That's all uh, Mockingjay Part 1 was. That, that That's all it was. So then when you wait a year to see the next chapter of it, you don't give a crap anymore. It's been a year since you've seen it. You're, you're off of that high. You know what I mean? You're off of that, oh my god, what's going to happen next? You settle down over the course of the next year, and then the next one comes out, and you're, you've forgotten what happened in the first one because nothing memorable happened. Nothing really See, big I won't, happened. I won't, so, I won't agree with that because if you're a fan of that franchise, even if you waited a year for the next film to come out, you know this because we, we do it all the time for every mm-hmm. Star Wars movie release. We wind up marathoning all the other films. Yeah. We catch back up to where we needed to be for the next film. That's true. But, but, I mean, you've got fans of Mockingjay, of Hunger Games, doing the same thing. And people just didn't – it wasn't as well received. Like, people didn't like the part one that much because, like, oh, not a whole lot happened in it. It wasn't that great. It was all lead up for the next film. If, if you're doing part one and part two, make it like what they did with the Infinity War films. Like, make each film its own beginning, middle, end. Beginning, middle, end. You know, you don't have to have this giant cliffhanger and then lead into the next one a year later. You know, if they're going to do that, at least make each make each part of it seem like its own movie. I mean, that, that's fair that's enough. Only, yeah. No, that, 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 that's fair enough. And I, I definitely agree with you that, that I think I, I do think Lucasfilm is probably looking at making it a two 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 part movie. But I think they're smart enough to turn around and say we can't do nine point one and nine point two. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I do. I do think they are really going to look at it and, and announce that it'll be episode nine and then the movie to end the saga's episode ten. Yeah. Or final episode. Maybe that. Maybe they'll go the road of like uh, Nightmare on Elm Street and it's Star Wars: The Final mm-hmm. War. Or final episode, or whatever the case may be. Mm-hmm. You, you know what I mean? Um, God, I hope they don't do that. But I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you and me both, man. As it as it came out of my mouth, I'm like, no. I that, know. I can I, feel I, my heart breaking as you said it. <laughs> I felt the bile coming up in the back of my throat. I sense the great um, disturbance in the forest as if as if millions of nerds just cried out in terror. No. no! <laughs> <laughs> Me to think a user gonna die. Oh God, go to hell, go straight to hell. <laughs> I got a pillow threatened at me. Damn. <laughs> but uh, no, I, I definitely think they'll 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 turn around and be smart enough to say we can't do a two part nine, mm-hmm. but we'll do episode nine and then the f- final episode, whether it be ten, whether it just be. Uh, the end of Star Wars, or what, whatever they decide to call Episode Ten, because mm-hmm. I, I, yeah. I think that's the biggest thing they're trying to figure out now. Do we call it Episode Ten, or do we call it the end of the saga? If like, how do we end this? Because if we call it Episode Ten, wouldn't that constitute people thinking that there's going to be another trilogy? And yet they've already stated this is supposed to be the end of the Skywalker saga. Okay, so what if they did something like this? We, what if? And just go with me on this, right? I'm, I'm with you. It, We're let, in speculation mode right, now. Right, right. So let's oh. say, you know, Disney realizes maybe a year is too long to have between episodes 9 and 10. What if they do episode 9 next December and episode 10 the following May, six months later? What if they release them that close to each other? Do you think that would really be a bad thing or do you think it'd be too much at once? I think it would be too much as, at once. However... And follow me this on this one. Mm-hmm. What if they make you wait longer than a year for episode 10? What if they release episode 9 and then Disney in their hype to get you ready for episode 10 do like uh, Lucas did uh, back in 97 and re-release every film to uh, theater like once a month or something in that in that year leading up to episode 10? Uh, I would be one broke motherfucker. <laughs> that that's what's they would, gonna happen. They would make bank. That's what's gonna. I, I will spend all my money before I get to episode ten. That's what's well, gonna fucking happen. Well, especially now. I mean, it's feasible now that that uh, Disney has Fox. Mm-hmm. 
they can release episodes one, two, three, four, five, six now. And then with the creations of, you know, uh, Solo and, and Rogue One, you could put those in their chronological order as well. So you release it as Episode 1, Episode 2, Episode 3, Solo, Rogue One, Episode 4, Episode 5, Episode 6, Episode 7, Episode 8, Episode 9. And then finally in that December, mm-hmm. do Episode 10. The end, the end of the saga. No, that would that, start in January and just work your way through? Yeah. God, man. I... That's a lot. That would suck because I would be in my harvest right when Empire Strikes Back is in theaters. No, I wouldn't either. It'd be solo. Never mind. We're good. Well, look, let's put it this way. Every every Star Wars sweaty would would uh, they would walk away from their own weddings to go to these films. Oh, God. Yeah. Especially people like my age who or a little bit older to me who got to see the original films in theater when they originally released. Mm hmm. And then, of course, your generation, which got the prequels well, as I, their first Star Wars movies. The, in theaters? I had the special editions yeah. in theaters. Well, you had the special yeah. editions as well. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, you would go for no other reason than the memories, besides oh, God, the fact yeah. that you just want to catch up on oh, God, everything yeah. before the end of the saga. Mm-hmm. But it, it would just be the memories of getting one final time to see all these films in theater before we move on to the, the, the new phase of Star Wars, which mm-hmm. is the... Weiss and Benioff, the the Ryan Johnson, the mm-hmm. the John Favreau, and and everything that they have planned moving forward from the sagas. Mm-hmm. You know, I I almost think that would be the smarter way to go, even if it does take more time away from episode ten. I imagine if they're going to do episode ten, if they're going to split it into two parts and make nine and ten, I imagine they're going to film like like Lord of the Rings. They're going to film them both at the same time, mm-hmm. back to back, and if. Yeah. Back to back, you know, they're going to film it all together all at once, the, but the they'll take the they first Avengers, half and release. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they'll take the first half and release, and then the second half will sit in the vault until it's time. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And uh, I think that's a smarter way to go because there ain't one real red-blooded Star Wars fan that wouldn't go into theater and <laughs> see every single film in theater. You're not wrong, bud. I cursed you with <laughs> murder up, me Caleb for having to. The, I would straight spend some money. What, what's up? Caleb 92. I ate a Wookiee. I ate a Wookiee meat for the first time. It was chewy. <laughs> Is it a Wookiee? <laughs> it's a Wookiee. A Wookiee. A Wookiee. But no, I, I'd give <laughs> both my testicles to go see all the Star Wars films in theater again. Are you kidding me? Uh, you know, especially one a month. That, that'd be a good. I Hell, I'd go watch all of them in one sitting if I could. But one a month, that that's good spacing. Especially knowing every time you went to one you're one movie closer to episode mm-hmm. 10 to this giant finale you know i mean and, and keep in mind this is all just speculation that they're actually splitting nine into two films you know <laughs> and we don't know for a fact that they are yet uh i don't think that's going to be something that they even tell us until nine comes out nine's going to come out and everybody's going to think it's the end and all of a sudden big cliffhanger and you're like what Oh what? wait, are you are you expecting because everybody's going to stand up and watch the final credits of episode nine that you think they'll actually throw in an end credit scene or something? A trailer for ten? For ten? I wouldn't put it past them. That be I, the first time I, ever I for think, Star Wars. Yeah, I don't think it, I don't think that's what they're going to do. But I, I wouldn't put it past them. I wouldn't be shocked if they did it. You know how many sweaties I hear cursing right now? It's like, oh my god, yeah. I left during the credits. I. <laughs> yep. Yeah, no, yeah. I, well, I mean, even now when new Star Wars films come out, people are still staying through the credits just in case. You know, well, even episode eight, as much as it was hated. Yeah. I when when Jen and I went to the theater, all of us stood and applauded the credits the whole time, and especially you know in the loving memory of Carrie Fisher. Mm-hmm. You know, but we we waited until it was over. We waited till the, you know, you saw the snap hiss of the end of the film tape. Yeah. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, I know. Marvel has ruined us. Like, Marvel has broken us to where we I've, stay at the end of every movie just in case, you know? Yeah, but to be fair, you know, since – I would say at least since uh, since the special edition releases, I've been staying until the end credits for Star Wars movies anyway just because it's John Williams' mm. film or John, John w- Williams' music. music. Yeah. You know, so I, – I and, of course, the, the theaters are always packed when you go opening night. Mm-hmm. So – 
it's just easier to sit there, listen to the music, and wait for the credits to end. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, instead of trying but, to fight everybody in the parking lot trying to get out. Right, yeah. you know? Yeah. So I, I would not be necessarily Val Kilmer was the best Jedi. <laughs> Actually, that'd be interesting. I, I, that'd be interesting to see uh, Val Kilmer as a Jedi. But would he be a human Jedi, or would they actually put him in makeup? Or, or would his Jedi robe have nipples? Oh, Jedi a robe. rubber Jedi, a rubber Jedi yeah. robe, nipples. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Schumacher. <laughs> it's the car, right? Chicks dig the car. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! Um, but I mean, I see. I can't pick on Val too much, though. I mean, as much as everybody hated Batman, although I think he was one of the better Batmans from that era, not the <sighs> film, his acting. Mm, okay, look. When you're talking about best Batman, you have to keep some things in mind. Bruce Wayne and Batman are two separate characters. That, I know that. that. That you have to judge them separately. So, like for me personally, right? Okay. The best Bruce Wayne, in my opinion was Val Kilmer. That was the best Bruce Wayne, in my opinion. The best Batman will always be, and I'm I'm going to piss so many people off when I say this, and I don't even care. Affleck. I'm going I'm to say it. Affleck is my favorite Batman in, in the suit. Well, no, I, I Affleck was a great Batman. Don't get me wrong, and I, I definitely like it. And I, I actually do like the Christian Bale Batman. I just didn't care for the Batman voice. Yeah. But the, the personas, I liked his separation of Bruce and Batman. But I'm I'm only speaking purely on the Tim Burton Schu, right. uh, Schumacher. Schumer, er, Schumacher era. Yeah. Of those three people who played Batman slash Bruce Wayne, I think Val Kilmer was the best. I I'm gonna catch flack because everybody's right because everybody Michael always, Keaton. Yeah. Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton was a great Batman. Mm-hmm. I hated his Bruce Wayne. Yeah, I agree. I hated it. Agreed. On the opposite end of the coin, Clooney was a great Bruce Wayne. Yeah. But don't even get me started Horrible. on that. That wasn't Batman. No, that wasn't Batman that at wasn't all. That wasn't Batman, no. That was that was a sad attempt at uh at trying to pay flattery to Adam West's Batman. Why the hell was Batgirl Alfred's niece? Look, I only like, went to see that so film. There's so much wrong see... with that movie that it was just Look, I only went to see that film to see Alicia Silverstone in tight black. Suit. Yeah, yeah, that, that was the only reason. When I got that ass shot of her first putting on that outfit, that was price of admission. <laughs> <laughs> Beyond that, the movie was garbage. <laughs> Sold it for me. <laughs> I didn't feel ripped off as soon as I got that ass shot. I'm That's like, funny all right, cool. Too, because remember... actually, I do feel ripped off because why didn't her suit have nipples? I. <laughs> I think you just broke my brain. I don't know. You're right. It didn't, did it? <laughs> Thanks, Schumacher. Because she was Alfred's niece. But, <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I, I remember going to see that in theaters when it first came out, and my dad was never a superhero guy, but he knew that I was, and he was like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the kids to see the new Batman movie. I think we went and saw it in Arkansas, because I think we were on vacation when it came out. But anyway, we went and saw it, and I remember, I, I will never forget, we got back in the van after it was over, my dad's sitting there, and he's like, that rubber suit, let me tell you something. Hell yeah. <laughs> like that's that's all he could talk about was the rubber suit and watching her suit up. But it really was. Batman Batman and Robin seems like you know, I know it was really just made them to, to, to sell toys. Oh god. We we all know it was just sold it made to sell toys, but it really felt like an ass backwards homage to the sixties Batman TV show. Like the the whole entire Bat American Express card felt so yeah, fucking like yeah Adam the West fucking to me. credit I forgot about the fucking credit card oh my you know, god and, never leave and, the cave without it you know and like, the over the top overacting of of Arnold Schwarzenegger and Uma Thurman you're was, just waiting for an automatopoeia to pop up yeah you know you're turn the waiting. fucking camera yeah. side you know all I needed was this yeah <laughs> yeah you know <what> I mean? yeah. <laughs> That's all I needed for 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 this. It's like okay, and then all of a sudden, all I needed was like you know, like during that ice uh, that ice scene where they like clicked their heels and made uh, <laughs> the ice ice skates show up. Yeah. All I needed was like bam, pow, boof, you know, showing up on screen, and it was totally sixties uh, b- Batman. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Actually, yeah. the one the one sin I would give the Batman franchise in every incarnation. And it's too late now, but in the original, and since Tim Burton's Batman, 
all the way through to Justice League. Mm -hmm. Why have they never once had a cameo of Adam West? Why? You're right. Like, I mean, it's, yeah, like you said, it's too late now. Why didn't that ever happen? It would have been great. It would have been just, look, hell, shit, you could have even done. Wait, 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 wait. Caleb 92, hold your thought, hold your thought. Caleb 92 just brought out something that I've got to find out from you, brother. What is it about it that that, that makes you say that? He says, I know I'm going to sound dumb, but Teen Titans, I'll watch. Well, no, look, it's you're not dumb for saying that. I mean, different. Oh, not at all. Yeah, no, I don't, different, I don't different like people that, yeah. like different things, you know. Um, but but I want to know what's appealing to you about yeah. it because we've had a discussion about this on the last episode, mm-hmm. and we're feeling it's hot garbage. So I'm curious what 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 about it uh, appeals to you? Yeah, you know, let let me know because I really I really want to know. Maybe you saw something I didn't. Yeah, maybe because I mean, I they lost me at fuck Batman. That, yeah, that, that's just that's before. just me though. But I mean, I'm not gonna bash somebody for liking something that I don't. You know, oh, I mean, not at, I'm not gonna all. do that at all. But, uh, but yeah, I want to know. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd I'd like to have that conversation too. So yeah, de- definitely. I know it's gonna take you a minute to, to type it out, especially if you go into detail. But uh, yeah, I definitely will read that out. I want to know your your opinion of it. Um, but yeah, I, I always felt that was a missed opportunity that you never paid homage to the guy who made Batman. Really made Batman for the screen. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I I know it was campy as shit and all that, but the '60s Batman TV show, without that Batman, the character probably would have died off. Hell, you, he could have been the Stan Lee of the DC universe. He really could have. You know, I mean, it's it's entirely possible, and it would have been just as entertaining. You know? So. No, absolutely. I mean, uh, as I said, the the, the Batman character could have easily have died off if it wasn't for adam west in the 60s tv show the same as superman would have been dead years ago if it wasn't for christopher reeve if it wasn't for christopher reeve i know there were other people that played the character beforehand but george reeve yeah i mean george reeves and stuff like that but i mean the character itself even in the comics was waxing and waning until the uh the what was it 79 uh for superman yes for the first superman donner superman i think it was 1979 was it? I think so. I don't remember. Keep talking. And I can that, look it up, though. And that really uh, re-energized that, uh, that character uh, for DC. Um, and I truly believe that the 60s Batman TV show did the exact same thing for Batman. Mm-hmm. You know, especially because you're talking t- towards the end of that era of comics. A lot of the superheroes were dying out. Like, they just weren't selling. People were going into more realistic stuff. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean, and uh, that really revitalized revitalized the comic industry for for spandex superheroes. Right. You know what I mean. So how do you not pay homage in some way, shape, or form? Yeah, no, you you, ha- you have to. Um, hang on, I'm looking to see when this. While you're looking it up, he says adult humor and 78. references. Seventy eight. Seventy eight. Okay, 78. so I was off by a year. Yeah. Uh, he says adult humor and references to old comics. Now, I guess I guess I can kind of see that. I mean, the adult humor is fine. As I said, there's a lot of things I find wrong with it for for whatever it is. Like, uh, I don't enjoy the casting choices for some of the characters. I'll leave it at that. Mm-hmm. Um, because to me, they don't fit what was always the characters in the comics. They, again, they may be perfect actors, but for me, until I see that, they just don't look like the characters I would want them to look like mm-hmm. or expect them to look like because they've looked like that throughout their total incarnations. Let, let me ask Two, you something. Oh, go ahead, fuck go ahead, go ahead. Batman. Yeah. Fuck, just, again, I, I say I said it in the last episode. I'll reiterate in case you didn't see the last episode. If you would have given me any other incarnation of Robin, if you would have given me Tim Drake or Jason Todd, mm-hmm. you know, as as the Robin of Teen Titans, and he shot out that phrase, I would not have had two thoughts about it. But the fact that it's Dick Grayson, Dick Grayson would never say that about Batman. Mm-hmm. 
Well, Ever. See, well, see, we don't know what context it's in either. Like, is this is this Teen Titans? Because I don't know. Is this Teen Titans supposed to be in the same? Is it in the Arrowverse or is it its own? Is it in the Gotham verse? Like, wh- like which one is it in? Obviously, it's not in the film universe. Okay, now you're lo- now you're losing my uh, my respect, Caleb. Batman is overrated. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. No, Batman is overrated. Batman is so overrated. No, he is completely right about that. No, everybody <laughs> in this fucking fandom has this bat boner that just folds out of nowhere whenever he comes on screen. Like, I like Batman, but God. Damn it, he is overrated. You are completely right about that. He is he, like that, that's all there. He's he, overrated. He's overrated because he's got he's got genius level intelligence. He's trained his body to the peak of no, performance, so did and he can beat every character in the Justice League. In fact, has a plan to do so. And oh has yeah, been, been the only doing. fucking way he can beat Superman is with Kryptonite. That was like that's the only fucking way. Everybody, you, me, Caleb, everybody fucking knows. That Superman could liquefy Batman's atoms in the blink of an eye. Like, wouldn't even know what fucking happened. Like, Batman using kryptonite on Superman. The only way that fight is fair is if Superman uses polio on Batman. Like, that's the only fucking way (laughs) that that is fair. They're in a fair fucking fight. Superman's going to win every goddamn time. How... How how did that fight go? How did how did both of them lose? It was a draw. <laughs> Why? Because Batman used kryptonite and Superman gave him fucking herpes. Him. <laughs> no, I'm 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 so I'm so sick of bat boners, man. He, you like, know what? I've been I'm growing so up, sick of bat boners. Grow, growing up since I was a kid, like I always respected Superman. He was one of my favorite comic book heroes. But for for DC, it was always Batman, and for Marvel, it was always Spider Man for me. Now, growing up, it's still Batman for me, but I, I would say Spider Man's starting to get edged out thanks to Ryan Reynolds and and Deadpool. Mm-hmm. I I used to not give a shit about Deadpool until uh, until Ryan Reynolds came up with the role and just blew my mind. I I will be the first one to honest. I jumped on the Deadpool da- bandwagon because of Ryan Reynolds mm-hmm. because I I used to. It's not that I didn't like that Deadpool. I just didn't care. Yeah, you know what I mean. Um, hey, but you know what? I mean, Superman is, first off, he's not superhuman. He's an alien. Right. He's an illegal alien if you want to get technical. Yeah. He didn't, he didn't come here legally. That's true. (laughs) If you want to get technical. But, uh, uh, but the super rich thing. So Batman is living proof that anybody could be a superhero with the right uh, uh, training the right mindset, and of course the, the 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 revenue to back up what you need. That's all Green Arrow was. It's all Green Arrow that's was. All, I'm not taking. That's away. all Iron Man is. Yeah, but if we're talking about we're, if we're talking about like uh, Green Arrow from Arrowverse, are we talking about the uh, wannabe Robin Hood in the comic in the original comics? Oh no 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 no! I'm talking like what Green Arrow was in like The Dark Knight Returns, because. Keep in mind, Batman couldn't take Superman down in that either unless he had Green Arrow's help with Kryptonite. Like, that's the only fucking way. And hell, I think if I remember right, wasn't Green Arrow one-armed in that? Hadn't he already lost his arm? I don't remember. It's been, so long I've read, it's been so long since I've read uh, The Dark Knight Returns. Oh. So, that, that's a hard one to... I will say, though, I am looking forward to uh, Death of Superman. I oh know that God, just released yeah. on D, on uh, Blu-ray. Yeah, and they're already they're already setting up for the arc of the uh, of the uh, the Superman. It's it's fucking good. It's good. Yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to that. I I am I am hyped for that. You know, however, since anybody we're talking with, about that Batman, is true. Anybody with dead parents could be a superhero. Pretty much every superhero has a dead mother or dead father or both or dead uncle or dead uncle. Dead well, friend. Never, well, remember the, the, the dead uncle. I know is you're you're pointing that at uh, Spider Man. He's also got a dead mother and father. That's true. That's why he was living with his aunt and uncle. That's true. <laughs> no, you're 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 right. I didn't even <laughs> shit. You're completely right. Didn't even dawn on me. What you know, the fuck? So yeah. I'm but super- you know, neither here nor there. Um, Damn, we got way off track. Yeah, we fucking we, we started at Star Wars and we ended up at fucking dead parents. How the fuck? I mean, Luke had dead parents. 
Well, okay. dead parent, look, singular. Look, look, look. Oh my god, you and your fucking bat boner. Oh, come on. It's better than this gay piece of shit. Bullshit. <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with that. <laughs> but um the the fact of the matter is is like in... All right, I'm I'm going to bring it back to Star Wars in a little bit with your with your with your enjoyment of of Superman here. <laughs> So Superman is your chosen superhero. That's my boy. We know that. Yeah. We know that. We got that. But I mean, come on, ain't he basically DC's Mary Sue? Isn't he Ray? Let's he be was, honest. Superman's really the original superhero though. He was created at a time, you know, he was what created what, thirty eight, nineteen thirty eight? He was created at a time where he was meant to be able to do anything. You know, he was so powerful that they had to introduce a weakness somehow, so they invented kryptonite for him. Um, as far as so being how a, are you going to have an issue as, if they as, made a well, MacGuffin because they realized wait, they made a character too strong? As far as being a Mary Sue, I don't think so. They've really toned his fucking shit down. Um, have they? they? I've been reading him getting new freaking powers. Yeah, he got solar flare. That's a big fucking deal. All he does is super, super Saiyan, super Saiyan Superman. That's all he is. Fuck that. It's fucking stupid. But anyway, um, I will say this much. Let me piss off every fan base on the planet here. I will say this much about Superman. Superman would totally kick Goku's ass. Oh, oh, I'm not getting in on that one. Oh, shit. Oh, I I'm got a totally buddy. getting in on that. Oh, I got I'm a totally buddy you got to talk to. Oh, my God. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Fuck Goku. Oh, Superman my God. Will whoop his ass. My buddy David in Ohio right now, if he's watching this, is screaming his fucking head off at you right now. <laughs> Holy hey Dave, shit. Dave, look at me, look at me, dead in the eyes, dead in the eyes. Look, look, look. I even bring the microphone up so I make sure you hear me. Oh my god, Goku would get whooped like Rodney King on an L.A. highway <laughs> by Superman. Oh my god, no, I'm I'm staying out of that. I'm look, I, I will say my opinion about almost anything. That is one I'm staying the fuck out of. I am not getting anywhere near that one. You guys know I like Superman. I'm just gonna leave it the fuck at that. So, but anyway, no, I don't think they, they really have dumbed him. Not really dumbed him down. They've, they've, they've kind of leveled him out a little bit. Um, he's not, I mean, in the new films, the, the new DCEU, if it's going to keep going, he never turned back time like he did in the old one. I mean, the old Superman movies made him OP as hell when he's rebuilding the wall of China by just looking at it. Really? That's not, (laughs) no. When he's shrink wrapping Zod. And throwing him in the freezer for later. Yeah, that doesn't do shit. Like, that's, they, he's not, in reality, if you had somebody as powerful as Superman is supposed to be, right? All right. Just him walking on the surface of the planet would crack it. All right, so he's not as powerful as they say, as everybody's claiming that he is. But he's a god amongst men. That's, I mean, he's not invincible. You know what I mean? He he can get his ass. Look, Doomsday beat his ass straight out without kryptonite. Doomsday beat his fucking ass. It'd be no different than two regular guys going at each other. So, yeah, he's not invincible. It's just, to us, he's a little OP'd, yeah. All right, I got a question for you and for, for, for uh, the people watching right now. Love to hear you guys' uh, opinion. Since we're on the topic of Superman, let's, let's discuss this. Brandon Ralph. Oh, he is a fixture in the DC universe Mm -hmm. in some way, shape or form. Of course, those that know he did do the Superman Returns movie, which was not highly uh, received, although I don't think it was a bad film. I really don't. It was boring, but I don't think it was bad. What what film was that supposed to be a sequel of? It was I, supposed to be a sequel to Superman 2. It was okay, supposed to be was, five years after Superman 2. Okay, because I was going to say, because I, I always heard somewhere that it retconned Superman 3 and 4. Like, yeah, it the, did. They never it happened. Did. Okay, okay. So I wasn't sure if that was the case. So it's five years after Superman 2. It's five, five years after his battle with Zod in Superman 2. Okay. Um, That's why he took off into outer space, because he after battling them, he thought Krypton, Krypton would still be around or heard rumor that Krypton or parts of Krypton might still be around. Found nothing, came back. It was five years later. Also is how he got Lois pregnant because if you remember in Super, uh, Donner's Superman 2 when Superman lost his powers or gave up his powers for Lois, they had that night of fun in the Fortress of Solitude before oh, they went to the diner. 
had the fight, you know, that made him realize I need to go back to being Superman. Mm-hmm. You know, stuff of that nature. So that was that was the tie in for Lois having his kid, even though, you know, they weren't supposedly ever had sex against in Superman two. That's why it's because it was only five years after Superman two. Gotcha. Um, but that the question being is Brandon Routh. Do you think it was unfair the 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 backlash he took for his portrayal of Superman? And was he a better Superman than he is the Adam on Legends of Tomorrow? Uh, Legends of Tomorrow. No, I'm gonna. Okay, first part of your question: Did he deserve the backlash? Uh, I don't think he was a bad Superman. Look, it's kind of like with uh, Green Lantern. Ryan Reynolds was a great Hal Jordan. He wasn't the problem with Green Lantern. The Green Lantern was just a train wreck in and of itself. Okay. And I feel like... Because, look, back when Superman Returns was in production, Henry Cavill, who is Superman now, was playing Superman in that. And then Brian Singer stepped in and said, no, we're going to do this all my way. And he got rid of Henry Cavill, brought in Christopher Ralph, redid the entire fucking story, rewrote everything from the ground up. And that's what it became with Superman Returns. And it was supposed to be something like Henry Cavill was supposed to be Superman back then. So well, no, I don't. I don't know about yeah, that because he was you, cast. you're forgetting. You're he forgetting about. You're forgetting about the Superman. What was it? Superman Lives or whatever with, uh, with Nicholas Cage. Cage. That was. That was just a couple years after Four came out. It was a little longer than a couple of years. It was, no, it was about the same time as the Burton Batman, the first Burton Batman. It was, it was a little later than that because Kevin Smith was was slated to write, and that was after his to success with it? things like yeah he was he was one of the ones they were supposed to write it until they were telling him to put a giant spider in. Uh, yeah, Kev Kev tells a story about it. He was supposed to be one of the writers, and that was after his uh, rise into fame. I would say more along the lines of like Dogma era. See, when did Superman Returns come out? It was two thousand and shit. I don't remember. Around the same time as Revenge of the Sith, so no, it 2003, was, 2005, maybe? It was, it was about the same time as Batman Begins, wasn't it? Weren't they coming out about the same time? I don't know. You got a better access to, to, to faster were. internet. Hang on, I'm looking. Because I want to know now. Well, while you're looking, though, what your 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 feelings on, like, uh, on... Uh, we I understand that you're not... You're, you, you don't hate him as Superman because of the film. You know, he mm-hmm. his performance was fine, even though the film wasn't all that great. Right. But your opinion on what was the better role for him, the Adam or Superman? I'm going to say Adam. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say Adam in the Arrowverse, just because I feel like he fleshes that character out better than he did Superman. Um, cause well, you're really, also talking about a couple he, Adam, seasons of Legends of Tomorrow versus one movie as Superman. Well, but when you look at Adam, he's essentially the DC Iron Man. Essentially, that's what he is, uh, and, and I think it I think it fits him a lot. Okay, Superman Returns came out in two thousand six. Okay, so around the same time as Revenge of the Sith, like I said. Yeah, Revenge of the Sith was oh, Sith was oh five. Oh five. Yeah. 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 So, but I think he I think he does the Adam better. Now, wasn't there an episode of Legends of Tomorrow? And actually, I don't remember very well. Didn't he die? I haven't kept up on the season, so I don't know. I felt like I feel like they killed him off. I could be wrong. People who watch the Arrowverse, it, it, let me know. I'm I'm probably wrong about this because it's it's been a while since I've watched anything in the Arrowverse. I kind of fell out of Arrow after season two. I think I fell out in the middle of season three somewhere. But um, I've been keeping up on Arrow. I've been keeping up on uh, uh, the Flash, especially. I'm really a fan of the Flash. I've kept up on Supergirl. Uh, but this last season really left me flat. I haven't really kept on Legends, and I will admit I have not yet. I've got it all saved on my DVR, but I have not yet really sat down and fairly taken a look at Black Lightning yet. Mm-hmm. I need to. I do. I, I do know I need to, but I haven't done it yet. Okay. So, but uh, no, I mean, look. Fair enough. I, Two, two things with Brandon Ralph as, Ralph as Superman. Again, like I said, he's had time to flesh out the Atom from first appearing in Arrow mm-hmm. and then breaking off into Legends of Tomorrow to really flesh out the character of Adam. Uh, Dr. Palmer is, is the character's mm-hmm. name. Right. But Superman slash Clark Kent, he only has Superman Returns. 
Right. And the one thing I will give him credit for is Christopher Reeves' wife approved Brandon Routh to play the role. Mm-hmm. She's the one that said out of everybody, he's the one that looks the closest to Chris. Yeah, but looks aren't everything, man. Well, he had the act down, too. I, I know. The way hey, he, he, the way he yeah. played Clark, the way he played Superman really was – Christopher Reeve, it was a it was a beautiful homage to him. Mm -hmm. The film itself may have been weak, but quite honestly, Brandon Ralph was a good Superman. And I don't I don't care about the politics going on uh, right now in Hollywood. Uh, uh, I do it to him all the fucking time. (laughs) Why can I not keep this actor's name in my head? Spacey. Thank you, Kevin Spacey. Was a hell of a lot better Lex Luthor than Jesse Eisenberg. Uh, I'll agree with that. Look, see the thing. See, here's the thing though with me. I'm of the generation that I grew up, and as soon as I say this, you're gonna be. I don't know. I don't even know how you feel about this. Uh, about to find out though. I grew up with the generation of Smallville, the TV series Smallville. That's, never watched it. You've never watched. It. I've got the whole series on DVD, and I bought the whole box set after it was done. Um, never watched it. Never watched The Adventures of Lois and Clark. Oh, with Dean Cain? Really? Yeah. And and Terry Hatcher? I watched that when I was a kid. Um, but no, Smallville. Jen's watching them. Jen's oh, yeah, watching them. They're good. I haven't yet. They're good. Um, but I was a Smallville freak. Um, never missed an episode, uh, except for when I went to basic training, came home, got caught up. Uh, but I, I never missed an episode of Smallville. I was invested in that for 10 fucking years. All right. And, uh, I, and for some reason, I can't think of the guy's fucking name right now. That played, the guy who played Luther. No, the guy that played Superman or Clark. It was. Uh, I feel like it was Tom. Damn it! What was his name? It was Tom something. What was the name? You got the box next to you. What's the name yeah, of the dude who played I'm, Clark in, in uh, Smallville? I cannot believe I'm forgetting that. I heard the Luther in Smallville was really good. It, what, I, again, Michael I never Rosenbaum. watched him, but Michael Rosenbaum played. Luther, um, but what is it? Sorry, Tom, the DVD. Tom, I, as soon as you say it, it's gonna. I got Tom people's... Welling. Welling, that was it. Tom Welling, thank you. That was it. Um, no, he was a great Clark Kent. Um, you never really saw him in the Superman just suit. So, at all. Just so you guys see that I, you know, yeah, was no, legit in the fact that we no, have. No, you need to I watch that watched... shit. You need to watch that shit, man. Um, but Michael Rosenbaum was like the Lex Luthor that I grew up with. Like that was the one, right? And then, uh, spoiler alert for those of you who haven't watched Smallville, when they kill him off in like season seven or eight, I was like, how the fuck can you kill Lex Luthor off before Clark even becomes Superman? Like how the fuck can you even do that? And then when they ended up in a roundabout way bringing him back in the last, very, very like last episode of the series, you're like, oh my God, you know, like. And the fact that he was back was just, it was insane. But that's the one that I grew up with, you know. And I watched him go from being Clark's friend and, and this teenager, right, to all these right. years up to what made him turn into the villain, you know, and, and, and why he was the way he was. I like Smallville to the point they did a season 11 comic. The show ended after season 10, but they did a comic book series called Smallville Season 11, and it was tom welling as superman it was continuing this series but in a comic book where he was superman okay and, and they actually because he becomes superman in like the last episode yeah i know and so they it actually it's stories the comic of that likeness of him and that story being continued and it was great they brought batman into it they brought green lantern into it uh wonder woman like they brought the whole justice league into it finally that they couldn't do on the show so it was that was the the incarnation of Superman and Lex that I grew up with. Um, because I know some people like, but going back to Kevin Spacey, Kevin Spacey did a great job, but Rosenbaum to me, man, always and forever will be Lex Luthor. Well, let, let's be fair. I had Kevin Spacey and, and Brandon Ralph, besides the fact that Brian S- Singer made a boring film, he, he really did. Super Superman returns was boring, mm-hmm. you know, con- conceptually all around. It was a boring film. But you can't really blame the actors, nor can you blame no. blame really their performances, because their performances weren't necessarily Kevin Spacey performances or Brandon Ralph performances. They were homages to Gene Hackman and Christopher Reeves. Mm-hmm. Spacey's 
incarnation of of Luther was literally the continuation of Gene Hackman. Mm -hmm. Brandon Ralph was supposed to be Christopher Reeve. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It, it was literally homage performances. In that aspect, I think they both did a fantastic job. And like you said, you grew up with uh, Smallville. I grew up with the original Superman 4 movies. Yeah. You know, I grew up with Christopher Reeve and Gene Hackman. Gene Hackman was my Lex Luthor. Yeah. Even though I know he was nothing like the comics in any way, shape, or form, as far as like on screen in film, that was Lex Luthor to me. Mm -hmm. And yes, I judge Jesse Eisenberg on that yeah. alone. Well, and when you can't even come up to the caliber of, you know, I love Gene Hackman as an actor, but as far as Lex Luthor is concerned, again, going off of the comics and everything else, I know Lex's Luthor was nothing compared to the actual Luthor. Mm -hmm. So with a bar that low and you can't even reach that. Yeah. Well, see, uh, when, you, when you're talking about Superman Returns, you got to talk about Lois Lane, too. And I think it was Kate Bosworth that played. Yeah. The, that was no kidder, man. No, no, no she was not by a long shot. I, I didn't buy her. I didn't no. buy her at all. Uh, Margot Kidder definitely gave me the 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 overconfident reporter. Mm hmm. Not so much a sex symbol or a damsel in distress, but, you know, even though Lois was always a damsel in distress in some way, shape, or form mm -hmm. uh, in the original Superman movies. But Margot Kidder herself didn't portray herself that way. Right. But uh, Bo Boswin, you said? Yeah. Uh, I think it was Kate Bosworth or something Bosworth. Like that. Bosworth or Bo Boswin, whatever it is really felt kind of sexualized yet not necessarily, I'm not necessarily saying like she was a, a sexy, sexy Lois leg, mm -hmm. like, like, you know, tits hanging out and shit like that type deal, but felt way more like we want a girly girl Lois as opposed to the rough and tumble tough as nails Lois that we had in Margot Kidder all those years, even though she was constantly screaming for Superman or, or mm -hmm. Clark. Cause Clark, even though she yeah. was doing that, at the same time, she had no problem turning around and punching uh, Ursa in the in the in the in the jaw in the in the Fortress of Solitude after the powers were taken away. Right. You know, she she had some beast in her. Yeah. You know, I did not get that impression of of Superman Returns and Lois in any way, shape, or form. No, me neither. And I really didn't get it out of who whoever it is playing it now. Oh, uh, Amy Adams. Uh, Amy Adams. Yeah. I would go this far. I think Amy Adams is the worst Lois Lane thus far. I look. I like the DC. I'm one of the people that like the DCEU the way it's sitting. But I agree with you. They they could have seriously done a different Lois Lane uh, than than the one we got. You know what's funny? You know who? You you know what character was a better Lois Lane than the one they have in the DCEU? Hmm. Uh the one who played. Uh, well, the two because there was two actresses. Who played uh, uh, the love interest of Bruce Wayne in the uh, Nolan Batman's? Oh, that played uh, Talia Al Ghul. No, not Talia. Not oh oh Rachel. Rachel, Rachel Dawes. Yeah. The way they designed Rachel Dawes felt more Lois Lane. Le Lois Lane than yeah. anything we've gotten since Margot Kidder. It was it was uh, Maggie Gyllenhaal in Dark Knight, who wasn't in Batman Begins. I can't think of her name. Katie Holmes. Yeah, that's it. Yep. That's, you're right. Yep. So, but yeah, it's, yeah, you're right. That felt more Lois Laney than, than what, than Amy, any than what Amy Adams is doing now. Yeah. Than what Amy Adams is doing now, than what uh, Superman Returns Lois did. Mm -hmm. Again, I think she was more Lois Lane since Margot Kidder. Mm -hmm. Well, see, like, like I said earlier, I grew up with Smallville and the Lois Lane in that is uh, Erica Durrance. Uh, I think they introduced her in season four or five. I think uh, it's she's the the rough and tumble. Don't fuck with me. My daddy's a general kind of shit. Like that's right. That's the Lois Lane that that's the way she's supposed to be. You know what I mean? Um, she uh -huh. still gets into trouble once in a while and Clark still rescues her and all this shit. But uh, it's seriously, she's like I remember one episode uh, she's being interrogated and. <coughs> She says something along the lines of, my daddy's a general, and to this day he still hasn't gotten it out of me and how I was able to take an Abrams tank to prom. Like, like, and, she, you know, she has that kind of sassy, don't fuck with me attitude, so. 
Um, hey, Jay Newtown, we will happily take the take the uh, break the fourth wall for you. And yeah, I would agree with you. Movie wise, Marvel is greater than DC, but yeah, comic book wise, DC has always owned it on Marvel. I um, you know. <sighs> Yeah, look, I I'm a DC boy. Everybody knows that. Like like we were just sitting here talking. Superman's my boy. I you know I, I I I love DC comics. However, I can call a spade a spade. I can if Marvel movies are kicking DC's movies asses, I'll I'll be the first one to say it. And they are. You know, DC needs to pull their head out of their fucking ass. And I'm, I'm one of those few that did enjoy Justice League. I actually had fun watching Justice League. I had quite a bit of fun watching Justice League. Um. I'm like stoked for Shazam and Aquaman, like like stupidly stoked for Shazam and Aquaman. But uh, I or Su- Aquaman Suicide, is Shazam, but Suicide yeah. Squad wasn't great. I'm gonna say no. Suicide Squad was shit. It was complete and total shit. The theatrical release of Batman v Superman was shit. The Ultimate Edition was was pretty good because they added that extra like half hour of footage in that made a lot more shit make sense. Um. But yeah, Wonder Woman was great. I liked Man of Steel, and I and I did. I liked Justice League. I think it was that was them finally getting it going the way they should have gotten it going, and you know, just nobody gave it a shot. You know, did, see, and and the thing is, I, I can call a spade a spade. I'm not saying that anybody watching is like this, but I'm 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 so sick of people's mentality of comic book movies where oh well, if Marvel didn't make it, it isn't worth watching. You know, because I I know that mentality is out there. If it doesn't have a Marvel Studios logo at the beginning of it, nobody gives a shit. Well, see, I'll I'll, I'll argue that point just because of the fact that one of the best uh, comic book adaptation movies ever was neither Marvel nor DC. It was Kitchen Sink Press, and it was a crow, Brandon Lee's crow. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, you no, know, I'm saying what I'm saying is now argue with me because I know a lot of people argue no, no, between I'm not, the Crow I'm not argue and with Watchmen. But, oh yeah, but the, I thought you were going to say Watchmen at first. The Crow, to me, is one of the best non-Marvel or DC mm-hmm. uh, comic book adaptation films of all time. But it's also part of the reason have, why I don't agree with them rebooting it. The the last time we got a, a superhero movie that wasn't Marvel or DC was fucking Hancock, and it was good. You know, I mean. That was the last time we got anything that wasn't Marvel or DC. Well, not true because we had Men in Black. We... That wasn't Marvel and DC. Well, no, you're right. I, well, I'm talking superheroes in general, like not just you're killing me, Smalls. I'm talking superheroes. An alien enforcement CIA hidden from everybody, including the natural government, is not superhero enough for you. All right, look, I'll, I'll concede X-Files? that point. I will concede that point. <laughs> I will concede that. You you have a point there, brother. I will I will give you that. But it doesn't fit the typical stereo oh, I'm sorry, the stereotypical superhero tights, flying cape, kicking ass kind of. You know what I mean? Fair. Yeah, that that's that's what I'm referring to. Um but the last uh, time we got one was Hancock. Well, real quick, real quick, uh Jay Newton uh 1018 says I had fun watching Justice League, but I'm not interested in rewatching it on DVD. Mm-hmm. I will rewatch Marvel movies a lot. Yeah. I watch all the DC movies at first, but a lot of them simply not as good as Marvel. Like, I'm going to go see Aquaman and Shazam, but I don't expect them to be better than Captain Marvel or Avengers 4. I agree with the Avengers 4. I I, I don't know enough about Captain Marvel to make that that assessment, but I will say this much. It is pretty sad from the DCEU, and we've had this conversation before. It is pretty sad from the D- DCEU that their two biggest franchise characters in Batman and Superman have constantly been struggling in the, in the film industry to, to really break out. And then sub-characters, and I know I'm going to get blasted for this, <laughs> but sub-characters like Wonder Woman – are what's really kind of keeping DC afloat, and quite honestly, ah. of the movies, and quite honestly, of the movies that are coming. Again, I still can't believe the words are coming out of my mouth. Aquaman's gonna whoop some freaking ass. Okay, wait. First off, I wouldn't really call Wonder Woman a sub character. She's part of the Holy Trinity. Like she's the, part of the Holy Tril- Trinity, yeah, but it's no, always Superman, Batman, and Wonder, Wonder Woman. Woman. It wasn't, you know no, what I mean? It, no, it. She there's. She's not a sub character to me. She's always. She's one of the main three. You know, she's like Leia and Han, Luke, and Leia. 
Okay, Leia's not a fucking sub character. Well, All that's, right, so that's fair. But when you talk so, about when you talk about the the the, the, the superheroes, she's always like number three. Yeah, I, I, when you say and again, I'm not, Leia, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to dock her. I'm not trying to knock her because she's a woman or anything else or anything of that nature. But like, look at it as a three stooges for the sake of argument. Again, I'm not trying to make her a stooge, mm-hmm. but you've got you got Superman being Mo, you mm-hmm. got Batman being Curly, and then there's Larry, who's just kind of there. Okay, so in Ed, Ed, and Eddie, is Eddie a sub character? No, he's <laughs> still a title fucking character. So I mean, <laughs> no, it to. Uh, that that's just my difference of opinion. It's just Wonder Woman is not a sub character to me. Um, and really, I thought she had a really strong standalone film in the DCEU. I thought it was actually a lot of fun. Um, it was kind of the cookie cutter superhero movie, really. Um, but and it's and it's hard to do a Wonder Woman after Marvel has done Captain America and made it so successful. It's hard to do a Wonder Woman movie, a Wonder Woman movie, and not have people say it's a knockoff of Captain America. It, it's it's hard to do that, but they they pulled it off in a great way, I thought. And and, and I loved Wonder Woman. I and like I said, I loved Man of Steel, um, Batman v Superman. It was the the ultimate edition that won it over for me because I I hated it. I walked out of that going, "Are you fucking kidding me?" Like the movies fucking suck. And, and Why'd still, you say that name? And, and and well, there's still a part of that movie that doesn't make any sense. Why at the end would it show the dirt hovering on Clark's coffin if it took the mother box and the fucking crash Kryptonian ship to bring him back? He was dead. He was fucking dead. Well, you I think why? I think I think the I think the whole entire purpose of that was uh, was them um, accelerating Superman's return. Mm-hmm. I think uh, just like in the comics, his cells just regenerate kind of on to it. own. Yeah. So you but, think, uh, so you're saying that whether or not they had put him in the ship with the mother box, he was going to come back one way or the other. He was eventually going to resurrect, just like he does does in the comics. Mm-hmm. I think they. I think Batman's idea of putting him in the ship, and or, or yeah, Bruce's idea of putting him in the ship and everything else in, in Justice League was literally accelerating the process. Mm-hmm. Okay. But uh, uh, Jay Newton says, well, not only is Wonder Woman better than them, but sub characters in Marvel are better movies than Batman and Superman movies. Ant Man, Guardians of the Galaxies are now just as recognized as Batman because their movies were amazing. He's Again, not wrong. I can't dispute that He's at all. He's not wrong. No, they they were up until like four or five years ago. They were B list characters. Nobody gave a shit about them. Iron you know? Man was a B list character. Yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, it's. Marvel has done something that DC has yet to be able to do. They've made us care about these characters. And, and you know, they, they sat down at the beginning. They had the long plan. They sat down 10 years ago and said, okay, look, this is what we want to get. We want to get from here to here. These are the characters we want to use. This is where we want to get to. So how are we going to do that? What We got we to gotta do the long game here. What, what route are we going to take to get there, right? Because so, now Marvel has done this thing where look at, like, look at animated DC films, right? You okay. have like Crisis on Two or like, Crisis on Two Earths, right? The okay. animated film. You have a Lex Luthor coming back from an alternate future, from an alternate universe, right? That mm-hmm. is war torn. The Justice League is mainly dead. You know everything like that. They've he's come back to tell these people, hey, you need to do this, this, and this to keep that from happening, right? So now with Marvel, what they've done with the films is they've built up that alternate universe. The war torn one. They've built right. it up now over the last ten years. Made us care about all these characters. Hit us in, with an emotional gut punch of Infinity War, and now they're gonna say, "Hey, we gotta fix this." When the directors say their deaths are permanent, I believe that their deaths are fucking permanent in that universe. So when you know you see set photos of Tony Stark in Avengers One wearing a shield outfit, you know, like he's going back to Avengers One. I feel like, yeah. I mean, think about it from Captain America's point of view in Avengers 1. If Tony had shown up wearing a S.H.I.E.L.D. outfit, an older Tony, grizzled Tony, wearing a S.H.I.E.L.D. outfit, and he had Ant-Man with him, who had yet to be introduced in the in the world, by the way, and he comes back and says, hey, I need that thing up on top of Stark Tower right now. It's a fucking Infinity Stone. That I need the staff and the Tesseract. I need them both right the fuck now. This is what happens. You know, Thor's missing a fucking eye. You know, everybody's fucking dead. He, Thanos just came out of nowhere and killed everybody. That's the war-torn future that we've seen in other stories like that. But we've always seen it from the past Captain America's point of view. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, like so they've they've done this long game where they've established that. And DC can, they got, what, six films out? And then everybody fucking hates it. 
because they're just making it up as they go. DC, if they if they were to sit down and map out the same way Marvel did, not necessarily do the same formula that Marvel has done, where it's standalone, standalone, standalone Avengers, standalone, standalone, standalone Avengers, but just tell the next story that makes sense in the timeline, they could do something great, you know? And if they just pulled their heads out of their asses and hired directors that we gave a damn about, you know what I mean? And, and writers that actually knew what the fuck they were doing and knew the source material... We'd have some really great stuff from DC. Sorry, I ran, end, into, I ran it just, really bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> just have an end game. It is all random now. I absolutely yeah. agree with you, uh, Jay yeah. Newton. In fact, I think the one way you could fix the uh, DCEU really more than any way else uh, was summed up best by Stan Lee himself, the man himself. Just have me cameo in your films. <laughs> But uh, be, we're, we're going to be ending this uh, stream here relatively soon. we got to leave time for yeah. advertisements and everything else for yeah. the edit for RadioCast. Um, so I want to get back on the Star Wars topic because we have one other Star Wars topic in, in play here. Okay. We did, we did kind of go off on a comic we book did. tangent, which is, which is fine. You know? <laughs> no, when, when there's no you put, problem with that. When you that. put me and Chris together and we start nerding out, man, there's no telling. We're like the DCEU. <laughs> we don't know where the fuck we're going with it. You know, we're it, like Indiana we, Jones. We're just making it up as we go along. But we always have an end game like Marvel. Uh, <laughs> and this end game, there was a, uh, uh, a fan theory slash rumor going around the internet recently. I want to not only get Brian on film because we've already discussed this, but we'll discuss it on air for, for you guys. I want to get Brian on film with it with his thoughts on it. But I also want to know your guys' opinion. And that is the theory that in The Empire Strikes Back, Admiral Hazel – Ozzel. Was not an Ozzel, with, a, with an O, not a ho, an O. That's what I said, Hazel. You said Hazel. Admiral Hazel. Oh, I sound like you said Hazel, like Stewie saying what, like whipped cream. You know? Whip, whipped Whip cream. Yeah, that's what. That's that's what. I, that's the vibe I got. Okay. Either way, uh, was not an incompetent admiral, but act, in actuality a rebel spy. Uh, they gave they gave uh, I'll give some sub contest for those that don't know they they gave some ideas of the fact that like uh, he he wasn't when 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 they were scanning sending out the probes uh, scanning planets trying to find the hidden rebels base they came to Hoth when Vader was there and he tried to convince Vader that that was just an uncharted settlement that it was probably smugglers like he was trying to av avert Vader's gaze from Hoth and when. At at time, Captain Piet and and Vader had decided no, the rebels are there. This is where we're going, and uh, and all. Ozel turned to Piet and gave him like a, a look, like "Damn you! Like you you ruined my plans." Type deal. Then later on, when Ozel brought the fleet uh, out of hyperspace too close to Hoth, which alerted the rebels, that was not an incompetent move by a seasoned admiral, but in fact did it on purpose so that way the rebels would have. Fair enough warning that the Empire was on its way and they can evacuate the base. And then the third of the uh, the, the third one was not as strong as the, as the first two. And I, again, I'm summarizing here. Uh, the third reason was because Vader literally choked Ozel to death from across the, the ship for for failing. Something he's not done to any other failure of officer. In, in the films. Mm -hmm. Like, even if he got annoyed and choked somebody, he didn't necessarily do it the way he did it to Ozel. Mm -hmm. That there was, it was literally Vader doing it, not because of the incompetence, but Vader figured out that he was, in fact, a spy. See, uh, like, that last one, the only reason I don't think that one have anything to do with it is because he told him while he's choking him, you have failed me for the last time. You know, if, I don't know, maybe I'm just reading too far into it. Maybe the theory is just somebody reading too far into it. Well, but, didn't he? Didn't he also kill? Didn't he also kill Nita in, in uh, Empire for uh, losing the, yeah, Falcon the Falcon in the outside field? Yeah, because he apology straight said, accepted, he goes, Captain yeah. Nita. He goes, "I'll take a shuttle and I'll personally apologize, to Lord Vader." Yeah, he knew how that was going to end. Yeah, yeah. So, but I, I didn't know if he actually killed him or just choked him out to unconsciousness. That's why I was no, like, "No, they don't." It, he doesn't kill dead? anybody. He doesn't kill anybody. They just choke him, drag him out the floor, put a mustache on him, put him right back into the fucking empire. Yeah, That's all they fucking do. <laughs> Robot chicken. No, uh, no. Seriously, in in all actuality, there's nothing in canon that says that that's not what's going on. And I never really thought about it 
But after you brought that up last night, I started thinking about it. And the, the direction they're kind of taking the comics right now, they could do something like that. And it would almost seem natural to kind of... Like, if, if there's a frame that comes up later on where Dodonna is telling somebody that looks just like Ozzel, saying, hey, we need you to infiltrate the Empire. Or if they, or maybe he's already there, or they just contact him, you know? I mean, to be an admiral, you have to have been in for a while. So maybe, you know, it's... I wouldn't be against it. I, I, I don't think they're going to go that route. But if they did, I wouldn't be shocked. I would be... I would love it. I think it'd be really cool to kind of build on something that was already there like that and make it deeper than what it was actually meant to be. Um, but yeah, well, I think, I, I think I'd be all right with it. I think they established it, uh, the, the possibility really well in things like uh, star Wars rebels with callous and, uh, uh, some of the other ones that, that looked the effect, mm-hmm. you know, and callous did stay on as an infil- uh, an empire infiltrator trader for quite a while. True. Before they finally brought him out of the Empire and into the Rebellion proper. Mm-hmm. Who's to say they don't do that with uh, Admiral Ozzel as well? Maybe Ozzel yeah. knows, serving on the Executor, you know, how Vader is and what the Empire's planning. And, like, there was a lot of people, I mean, in canon, if, if I'm not mistaken, especially in the books and the comics, there's a lot of people within the Empire, including the ranks of the military of the Empire, mm-hmm. that did have a lot of issues with the Death Star blowing up Alderaan. Oh, God, you freed Lost Stars. Like, yeah. I mean, Lost Stars alone was one of those things where you realize, holy shit, like, a lot of the Empire was like, what the fuck did we just do? What the fuck did we just do? Oh my god, like, why the fuck am I fighting for these people, you know what I mean? Right. Um, but, like, you brought up, it's not, it wouldn't be the first time they've retconned something like that or added on to something like that. Uh, like, you brought up yesterday how they've made Captain Rex now, that that's Captain Rex in Return of the Jedi on yep, Endor. Uh... Rebel Rebel Soldier yeah. Six, yeah, you is, know, is now Rex. Yeah. yeah, so it's 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 Captain Rex. You know, it's they've done stuff like that before, just to kind of make it fit in with other canon. Like I said, I don't think they're going to do it, but if they did, I think it'd be fucking great. I mean, it'd be a great story arc. It'd be something that you could really kind of build on a lot more. I mean, because think of where it would go from there. You know, because then between Empire and Jedi, you've got the Empire going, oh shit, we had a rebel infiltrate us at the level of Admiral? We need to start watching our shit, you know? <laughs> like, well, like, I, so, I, I think mean, you could really build on that quite a bit. Well, again, I, like I said to you yesterday, um, do I think that Disney and Lucasfilm now could tie into that? Absolutely. Uh, but do I think George Lucas intended that when he wrote Empire Strikes Back? No. Ozzel right. was just that was it just an incompetent bureaucrat. Mm-hmm. You know, who got his comeuppance for, for being a screw up. Yeah. That was all Ozzel was to George Lucas. But mm-hmm. with the tie ins and everything else, with the new directions that Star Wars is going, you can absolutely write that out and it would make perfect sense. Yeah. You yeah. know, it's, um, it's, it's not one of those things that you would have to force to make it work. You know what I mean? Like, no pun intended. It's, it's, it's not one of those things that you would have to make a shitload of backstory to make it work. It's one of those things where. You could do two frames in a comic, and boom, there it is. You know, like exactly. It, 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 it's it's set up primely for something like that to be built off of it. It's it's in a it's in a perfect prime position to be something bigger than what it actually is. Look, I'll, I'll put it to you this way: the best way I could sum this up is normally with a lot of fan theories, especially within the Star Wars universe. My reaction is usually I roll my eyes. Mm-hmm. You know, even even if I agree with it in some way, shape, or form, I just roll my eyes. It's like it's just a bunch of fan theories that when it goes wrong, people are just going to throw hissy fits because they weren't right or whatever else. I usually just roll my eyes and shake my head. Mm-hmm. This one caught me. Yeah. This one really caught me because, I mean, it has no bearing in the Star Wars universe. It's not like guessing Ray's parents or something like that. But it really makes more sense to that character. Yeah. Well, see, and and look, I know the two are, are opposite. Oh, I don't want to say opposite. The two are separate things, but they're both still under the Disney umbrella. Look at Marvel, okay, as an example, right? Uh, right. Iron, Man, Iron Man 2, the little kid with the Iron Man helmet. It is now canon in the Marvel Cinematic Universe that that was Peter Parker. Not and just it that. Was, it was the amazing Spider-Man Peter Parker, if I'm no, not no, mistaken. No, 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 no. It was the Tom Holland Peter Parker. It was, right, it's, right, it's okay, one. yeah. Yeah, no, it's yeah, the new okay. one. Because uh, they, and that started as a fan theory. Somebody's like, well, what if that was the kid that ends up being Spider-Man, you know? And that's why he kind of looks up to Tony Stark and, you know, he, he wants to be a hero and all this stuff. And then as soon as Marvel found out about it, they're like, fuck yeah, let's do it. So it's 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 canon now. 
You know, like that is when you watch Iron Man 2, that kid, that's Peter Parker, you know, so it's. Oh, my God. It's kind of cool when they do. So, I mean, it's entirely possible they could do something like that. Oh, I just had a freaking stroke thought. Oh, almost. Almost. I just had a thought pop in my head. It's probably completely preposterous, but I'll, I'll throw it out there. You guys in the comment section and everything else, leave your opinion of it. I know Brian's going to blast me right now for it. <laughs> The end of the last Jedi, the random, the broom boy, broom kid. Yeah. What if the whole entire Ray parents thing is just a red herring? What do you mean? Her parents being nothing. Let's say for the sake of argument, Kylo lied. Mm -hmm. And Ray is an important character. I'm not trying to take away from Ray's lineage or not lineage, but, but, uh, importance within the star Wars universe. But a lot of people have been clamoring for Mar Jade and Luke Skywalker and stuff of that nature. They never gave a name, to my knowledge, to Broom Kid. They didn't. What if Broom Kid was the unknown son of Luke Skywalker and Mar Jade? You know that something like that is entirely possible. I don't think you're going to see Broom Kid again. I don't think you're going to see that particular kid again. To be completely honest. Uh, I think that was just more of a, a symbolic, uh, I'm sorry, a symbolic kind of, hey, there's more people out there that could be Jedi. You know, I don't think you're going to see that specific fucking kid again. But if they went that route, what, what are the odds of that, though? You I know, want a Broom I mean, Kid standalone movie. Broom Kid, Broom <laughs> Kid, a Star Wars story. Um, <laughs> and it's just him cleaning out stables all day for five years. There you go. <laughs> and getting whipped. Yeah, that's... that's uh, whew, boy, I could see... Jesus. I could see people losing their fucking minds over a movie like that already. But anyway. Uh, but what kind, what kind of a... What kind of a... Oh, shit moment. That... that Quite honestly, if you think like about it... That kid, would, like that you would know almost... that was Broom Kid. And then he came up and he's like, Oh, yeah, my daddy was Luke Skywalker. And you're like, Wait, what? Like, really? Because he was almost... just in his fucking 60s, like... Or 50, that I would almost that would almost be that would almost be your the Luke I am your father moment in Star Wars that everybody's so concentrated on on the the resistance fight against the First Order and who Ray's parents are and whether it's real or not real and then all of a sudden you find out that this is the long lost child of Luke Skywalker and now known to be existing in the universe Mara Jade all this right. is ben, this is Ben Skywalker. Well, of course, they're going to okay. rename, so, but you know what I mean. So put it, look at it this way. Let's say you're Broom Kid, right? I wish. How would you, f <laughs> how would you feel if you found out your older cousin was the asshole running around the galaxy blowing up fucking planets again? Like, cause he's going to be the cousin of Kylo Ren. I would probably feel the exact same way as Luke felt finding out his father was Darth Vader. Yeah, but then you know, everybody. I can see it. I, I can already fucking hear it. Now, Broom Kid's going to come out of nowhere. Oh, my daddy was Luke Skywalker. Instantly makes it okay that he's a Gary Sue. Like, instantly makes it the fuck okay. Everybody's like, oh, Ray doesn't know how to fight with a lightsaber. Oh, but that kid just pulled a fucking broom to himself with no fucking training. How the fuck did he do that? You know, like. We all, we all have that idiot cousin. It's relatable. <laughs> <laughs> he's not wrong. On that. Not on that wrong. note, guys, that is, he's not wrong. <laughs> on that note, guys, we're going to go ahead and end this one here. Thank you very much on Radio Cast oh, FM for God. tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this uh, podcast. Uh, Twitch, guys, thanks for hanging out with us. On YouTube, if you like this video in any capacity, please make sure you hit that uh, thumbs up button. Share this video. Subscribe. Check out all the other great Let's Plays on uh, Press A Gaming as well as all the other podcasts of Realm of the Mist Entertainment, including one that you're going to hear about right now. Mr. Brian Miller, why don't you talk about what's going on with you? Hey, uh, you guys, I'm actually in charge of a YouTube channel called the Star Wars Canon Library. All we do is keep all the canon material in chronological order. Uh, we have a website, StarWarsCanonLibrary.com. You can check out timelines there, cover art for all the co every comic issue, every novel, every TV show. Everything is there so far. Uh, you can check that out. Uh, there's a timeline for everything chronologically, including Clone Wars. All the episodes there are in chronological order as well. Make sure to check out that YouTube channel as well. Give me a subscribe there. Uh, and Chris Stolle and I are getting ready 
ready to come back on September 1st with the Star Wars Canon Podcast, the return of the Star Wars Canon Podcast. Uh, we're going to be kicking that off on September 1st again. It's going to be on that YouTube channel. Uh, be live here on Twitch first, and then it will be put onto the channel later. Uh, make sure to check out the Patreon page for that. Also, we've got a lot of stuff coming just for the patrons for the Canon Library. Uh, what else is there? Check out the Facebook page for the Canon Library. Uh, there, uh, we're going to be doing some live Q and A's at the end of this month. On I think it's the last Friday of this month. Last this on the thirty first, uh, seven p.m. Central Standard Time. We're going live, answering everybody's questions about Star Wars canon and canon material. We're going to be giving away a hardback copy of Thrawn Alliances uh, to one lucky viewer. So make sure to tune in for that as well. Uh, and I think I've pretty much nailed it, don't you think? I think I, I've, I think, I think so. I've pretty much hit everything on the on the. Uh, oh, oh, and don't forget if you guys want. If, uh, okay, so uh, check this out. On the YouTube channel for Canon Library, we have a show that Chris and I did for a while called Journal of the Jedi. It was Chris's brainchild. It was his baby. We're going to be bringing that back for the patrons. Uh, and the patron, the, the patron's only $2 a month, but we're getting uh, – you're, you're going to be getting Journal of the Jedi, the podcast. We're going to be doing uh, some novel discussions at the end of every month, going in depth in some of the novels. And we're going to be doing some TV after shows also, some of the TV shows, uh, Rebels, Clone Wars. I think we're going to rewatch. We're going to watch the new Clone Wars whenever it comes out, Resistance, and then John Favreau's live television series coming out. So uh, we're going to be doing after shows for every episode of that also. So definitely, definitely worth checking out the Patreon uh, for the Canon Library. All right, now I think I got it all. Sorry. All right, and guys, remember to uh, on Twitch stick around because uh, within the next uh, 10, 15 minutes, I will be joining our friends at over at the Cocky Cockpit to be able to uh, stream some Battlefront 2 on PlayStation 4. If you guys ha own a PlayStation 4 and a copy of the Battlefront 2, please contact us. We'd love to have you guys on with us. But uh, stay tuned for that. But otherwise. For Brian Miller and myself, thank you very much for tuning in, and we will catch you next time. May the force be with you all. Always. Always. <laughs>